Welcome back to the VHS Vault. I'm your host, VHS Jason. Of course, next to me is Jason Roy Gaston, who knifes New York. Yes. I re, 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 New York. And if you haven't guessed, well, the big clues in his title, we are going back to, to no, we're not going back to Camp Chris Lake. It's For a little bitty, bitty bit. A little bitty bit. Jason yes. is going to Manhattan. He takes Manhattan. Yes. Number eight, Jason. Number eight. Now, great. Great. We got eight. The and great eight, yes. Yes. Now, we watched the last one, the new blood. And let's just say we probably didn't have the best time with that Friday the 3rd. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? That movie was butchered by the censors more than Jason Butcher's his victims. Mm. But eight, however, eight, and I let it out of the bag, is goofy, and I had a fun time, Jason. Just to put it out there. Because I know some people would be big Friday the 13th fans out there, maybe a little bit annoyed and go, ah, oh, here we go, dragging on eight. Nope, I'm in. I had a blast with this film, Jason. This movie is incredibly stupid, but I dig it. As a matter yeah. of fact, I wish that it would have leaned a little bit more into the stupidity, mm. and I wish that it would have done a few other things, but for the most part, I enjoyed this, and I enjoyed it more than what I should have. Mm. This is in my big epic VHS era. Of course, I saw this on VHS. Didn't go to the movies to see this at this point. <laughs> Nobody <But> did. <laughs> Nobody did. And I think uh, we can get into a bit more of that. So, And, yeah, in saying that, Jason, you didn't go see it at cinema either. It was a video or Showtime or something like that. This was a video uh, yeah. uh, rental for me. But I do remember seeing the trailer for this movie. And I saw it before... Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, which is also just a a banger of a sequel in itself. Mm. But I remember I was walking down the aisle to my seat, and the, the trailer was the New York City skyline, and you just see this man with his back to the camera, and he turns around, and it's Jason Voorhees. And it says, Jason takes Manhattan. And I remember everyone in the audience goes, Oh, really? <laughs> You know, but I was excited when I saw the trailer for this. Oh, device. I was just like, I want to see yeah. that so bad. And I would yeah. have seen it in theaters, but I was sick that day. <laughs> Andrew, uh, you got any tidbits for us this week about the making of this film, Jason? Absolutely, because this movie caused controversy before it was even released. Ugh. The original poster for this movie featured Jason ripping through an I Love New York poster with a knife. Mm. Now... If you have your hands on one of these posters, it's a collector's item. You can probably sell it and retire because they are super rare. Mm. Because the New York Tourism Board complained and said, that is not something we like. Mm. Plus, there, there was the simple fact that the I Heart New York was copyrighted. <laughs> and so they decided, okay, let's not have this, this poster. But if you have this poster, as I said, it is highly collectible nowadays um but just on a personal note i love this movie because this is pre-disney Times square and this is back whenever it was cruddy and filled with peep shows and porn houses and everything like that and this is such a strange time capsule because this is right before they cleaned up Times square wow. in rather legally questionable ways i might add mm. but i i love this movie for that reason, this was the very end of the decadent Times Square era, and it's it, a time capsule here. It is, and it's certainly from someone who hasn't been to New York and watches it from the other side of the planet, observes it from the other side of the planet through film and television, that's the New York I like, you know? I mean, from a visual sense, you know? you know, back That in New the York 80s, is dead, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, if you had it's a scene in Times Square, generally in movies in the 80s, something bad was going to happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, but we don't start out Manhattan in this film. In fact, no, we start we out at camp, at, well, at Crystal Lake slash River. You got a question? Yes. And it's so <laughs> strange you mentioned that because that is my first note. I said, wait a second. Not only is Crystal Lake connected to the ocean, that must mean that it's salt or brackish this entire time. <laughs> And for some reason, there's also high-capacity power lines under the water for absolutely no reason. 
because they wouldn't put high capacity power lines underneath a lake. They would just put them around the lake because that's why it's a lake. (laughs) Exactly. So it is questionable straight off the bat, isn't it? Um, But however, who knew that Jared Leto was in this movie (laughs) Mm. as one of the two kids on the houseboat? You know? Yes. And can um, I say, this Jared Leto kid is an absolute jerk, by the way. He is. We got we to talk about this guy, though. The actor's mm-hmm. name is Todd Caldicott. Okay. Um, he was the first victim. Um, first, I call him Twink Jason because he does come out and he's got the mask on. Sure. And, of mm-hmm. course, he, he scares his girlfriend, but everybody in the audience is like, that's not Jason. Obviously, mm-hmm. that's not Jason. This is this is some twink wearing, wearing this mask. But what I thought was weird was that the mask has all the damage that Jason's mask has on it. Where did he get the mask? Again, exactly. this movie is just showing at the very beginning, this is not going to be logical. Don't put too much thought into it. But uh, let's talk about the actor. This actor, who is a bad actor, by the way. Hmm. Um, th- this is my impression of uh, of Todd Caldicott getting killed. Is <laughs> Smear it on the window. Yeah, just, <laughs> it's this. It's just, what is this? Oh, no. <laughs> Was this it supposed to be inside me? Um, Todd Caldicott is now an herbalist and an author of textbooks. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he gave up the acting gig and went into academics. That is fantastic. What you. kind of herbs? I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm not sure, and I'm not it's going in to insinuate anything. Field, at least. <laughs> but he is in Canada, and he writes textbooks, so go there. Yeah. Also, the uh, his companion... Also, not the best actor in the world. No, um, she screams for the longest time in that section of the boat. Just sits there screaming as Jason's lording over her. Yes, she had plenty of time to do a run. She and whenever he finally stabs her, which the the kills in this movie are a little bit muted, but I think they did that because they didn't want this movie to be censored as well. Whenever she's killed and she sits there, it shows a. A long shot of her in this little uh, I don't know what you call it a, a trunk or whatever it is and this is what she looks like yeah like she's mad yeah I like, can't believe I didn't make it two minutes and Friday the 13th part eight um yeah just just awful Both actors Both yeah guys. but if you go back to the harpooning bit he remember Jason fires off doesn't he and Mrs. Jared Leto Yes, he does. And He's, then actually stabs him with the harpoon weapon itself. Well, you know, Jason is very pragmatic. He just he he uses what's ever around him. If there's a roll of duct tape and a and a and a um, salami, somehow or another, he's going to kill you with the roll of duct tape and the salami. Oh, he's the MacGyver of the horror industry. There's no doubt he about is. it. He is. He is. Comes to a killer, he will get you out of a situation with a rubble band and some uh, blue tack for sure. Yeah, he'll but, you know you'll come he'll come up to you with a sock, you know. And, no, yeah. no, how are you going to kill me with a sock? Stab comes out your comes out the back of your back and. But of Jason course, the boat it, I love catches the that power line you were talking about. And, of course, it does. And at this point, all Jason needs is you know a few thousand volts to keep him get him going again. So, can we also talk like about dead battery? Can we also talk about? how he was situated at the bottom of the of the lake with all the dock parts on top of him and his one hand just up like this. I don't know why. I just found that so funny. I actually looked at that and thought, oh, is, is that a bit of continuity there from one of the last same shots of part seven? It's so strange. They have that bit of continuity, but now Crystal Lake yeah. is part of the ocean. It's now got a, uh, maybe it's a man-made canal they've made. I don't know. But the the whole idea, right, which looks like a shipping freighter boat, right, does not look mm-hmm. like a a fun time cruise ship. No. Basically no, it's what not. They're selling it as is a party boat here, aren't they? They so are, the and it's so we weird. Got a bunch of high school kids going on a, what, prom or spring break excursion. And so Do they ever really features. specify? No, they don't really. Where is where is the man in this this actor who's been a great B actor all the time playing the well the head teacher in the movie? 
Yes, um, and the only thing I could remember him from was mm -hmm. that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where the Enterprise picks up all of those people who were frozen, and he's yeah, the rich I, guy. He's I like, thought he you, was you do know that money I could, on the boat. <laughs> yes, you do know that I could sell this, I could buy this boat and sell it, right? I could buy this ship. Oh, no, you can't. You sit down. I'll <laughs> smack you silly. Yeah, that's how they should have done his death. Just about if he's going to die, it should have had somehow connected to it. Well, maybe the maybe the goo that he drowned in, maybe that was like cryogenic fluid. So there yeah, you go. Yeah, could have been, could have been. We'll make it connect to both Paramount properties. They can make yes. it work. They um, also bring in another crazy old man to warn everybody about Jason. Ah, Where are these old crazy shit, old mate? men coming from? I know. I, I mean, swear. But look, I tell you what, though. I yes, the community clearly has some mental health issues in the town with all these crazy people. I need to deal with that. But secondly, he's actually functional in this one. It isn't once. He repeats well, he's got a the job, same yeah. warning about three times. I, I want to know what the rest homes at Crystal Lake look like. It's just full of, of old men and women going, you're doomed. You're all doomed. <laughs> yeah. You're doomed. You're doomed. You're doomed. You're doomed. I just feel, feel sorry for the people that work there. It's lunchtime. Oh, no. Here we go. It's time for your pudding, you Mr. Mr. You're McGuffin. Doomed. You're doomed. <laughs> We're all going to laugh at you. <laughs> Would you like some more potato? You're doomed. You're, you're doomed. doomed. You're all doomed. <laughs> But we get, like, you know what is really flat and boring in this is literally all the young people in this movie don't work for me. The lead girl doesn't work for me at all. She comes off whiny. We've got a real yuppie spin on this group, haven't we? Everyone's a bit more uh, very late 80s looking. I don't know, of yeah. course, it's the time period. But there's a different shift in... They're not as maybe as perverted as the previous generations of It's Friday like teenagers. they took the cast of Parker Lewis Can't Lose and put oh. them into a Friday the 13th movie. Greatest now, um, on his TV the, series. Uh, the final girl from the last movie was scripted to reprise her role in this movie. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to be the, the, well, obviously the one who was seeing spirits, which is explains why she's seeing spirits. Exactly. We haven't got to that yet, but that baffles me in this movie. And oh, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I remember watching this thinking, huh, okay, it's another psychic girl. And then I got to watching the scene where little baby Jason first shows up, and I'm thinking, yeah. the dog can see it. Why can the dog see this? See it. Are you talking about this moment here? Yes. The portal? Yeah. Which it crosses the line of vision to reality in a nonsensical way doesn't it because well it, it's also there's the fact a connection that, between her and jason which is never explained at well, all they, they try but to me it never pays off well what's the connection again that it could it's whenever she was a little girl her, her yeah and she gets dragged uncle. down by the boy yeah. so his and you never boy. got me you never got me yeah okay um why are, why is the little boy being played by a, a different actor now <laughs> How many different actors yeah. are going to play this kid in this movie? Is that what we're trying to say to the audience now? Jason lived under the water. Yeah. All we would do is breathe underwater and wait for kids to go swimming who couldn't swim and he would pull them down. So that connective tissue is garbage. Because what I, you're trying to do is connect it to a non sequitur from the first film. Exactly. And it's so strange because... You know, obviously Jason is a zombie, and they actually call him a zombie in this movie for the first mm -hmm. time ever. But then also he's a ghost because I don't know if you noticed, but Jason gains a new ability in this movie. He can teleport now. Yes, because the heavy metal yeah. chick, his first, uh, his first victim on this boat, mm -hmm. looks up, sees him above her, screams, runs down to the bottom of the boat, which is a stupid move, admittedly. Because there's no doors down there. Yeah. There's a screen door, but we don't talk about it. But she, she goes down there, and literally, Jason's already there to smack her with her guitar that somehow he picked up already. Is he a ghost now? Does he have these supernatural powers? Because well, I'm not going to lie. If he you, did, aren't they? Yeah, if he did have those powers, if he's learning how to use those powers, that would be great. I would be all for it. 
you know, give them a little bit of extra thing, but it's never explained because this script is just, I don't want to say it's garbage because it does have its moments, but it's just, it does not, it does not say why this is happening. And there's yeah. so many questions that are left up in the air and don't even get me started on the ending because uh, uh, let's leave that till the ending. Yes. Well, this film really should be called Jason Takes Manhattan eventually because yes. <laughs> we uh, do spend a lot of time on this boat, which wasn't in the initial plan. I think the initial plan was to have half on the boat. Well, actually, I think the first idea would have third on the boat and the rest of the film set in New York. And obviously budgetary reasons changed that. Yeah, Paramount I just like told him no. Each individual concept very well. Having a whole film set on a cruise ship with Jason running around, that works for me. I'm yeah. good with that. Jason um, at sea. That's right. And of course, Jason in New York as a concept alone is really great, you know? Um, and the film is at its strongest when they get off the boat. Yes, it the is. The moment they. And we'll get to that later, but it really is. But it's not horrible. That first death was really horrible because, to me, it was an excuse just to get the rock MTV chick looking hardcore in her. That's right. Um, but there is some weird things. All the teenagers in here, even though they're a bit more yuppie, none of them are interesting. None of them really scream. I mean, we have the the jock who seems to watch like girls boxing because that's yes. that was a scene. Very weird. Even Kid Captain Todd. That's who I've called him. Kid Captain Todd. His old why, man really... Why is an admiral in charge of this boat? He seems a bit overdressed for that. Why? Boat. Exactly. I have no idea. Even if it was like a top-of-the-line cruise ship, an admiral would not be commanding this boat. A captain would be, but not an admiral. Hey, it's man, very it's odd. It's... It's like somebody who just thought, well, you know, Kirk's an admiral. He's in charge of one ship. Let's just make this guy an admiral. <laughs> hey, man, if you're a parent dropping your kid off to that boat, would you let him on it? Like, no. Like a paint job. Like, you, honey, you don't have a tetanus shot. Well, you're not getting on that boat. <laughs> you're not getting on you see that deckhand over there telling everybody they're doomed? I believe him. We know it's the late 90s because now we have the introduction of a new teen stereotype, and that's geek video guy. Yes. He's constantly got his video camera with him. Yes. Um, I actually thought that it led to a fairly clever scene. And that is whenever he is down in the hold and he loses his glasses and he has to rely on the viewfinder to see. It is a I, clever scene. I thought it was clever. And, it made um, it claustrophobic. Exactly. To me, it was almost like the, a found footage movie at that point. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm digging this part. This is good. And then, you know... Dur, dur, dur. Now he's 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 a crispy critter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Part of me thought it was funny that Jason throws him into that that uh, control panel and the guy catches on fire. Yeah. And then we cut back to him like three or four times, and it's just his body burning on this control yeah, panel. And I'm just like, shots of it. I I don't think he's gonna get better. No, well, they, <laughs> I, think, I think he's just well, dead. the director's like, let him on fire. We're gonna slowly pan for a dolly shot here. Want to yeah. see his leg? Um, <laughs> but we get mean girls. We got mean girls. We got mm -hmm. uh, we oh got my gosh, real troublemaker. That the blonde, blonde girl that does oh. coke, and the foolish friend who just tags along because she's not brave enough to stand up to her friend. Like ugh. Okay, you know? let's talk about the blonde girl. She literally does an attempted murder in front of a teacher. Yeah. And they never do anything about it. You should literally, have broken bones at least from that. Yeah. Hole. Literally tried to murder a girl because she thought that she might rat them out. To say nothing of the uh, the sexual harassment against the teacher. Yeah, and that is going full on, hey. And you know what saves that scene, though, is the teacher. Yeah. Like, not succumbing. Like, go, what Which, the hell? Get I will off say me. that teacher should have immediately, instead of laying it down goes on the bed, a bit there, should have, yeah, should have immediately, the bed. get off me. What's wrong with you? Gross. You're yeah. a teenager. Get off me. Disgusting. Yeah, the moment she disrobed, it'd be like, you put your clothes on right now, young lady. But no, it doesn't kind of happen like that. Um, <clears throat> but you know, he's thinking about his stocks. How much are they going to be worth in 24 centuries? He's. <clears throat> 
His eyes yeah. not on the prize. You know, he's thinking about those future profits. Um, but to be honest, I kind of saw Jason as the the main protagonist guardian angel at this point. Because he is literally going around and getting rid of everyone who threatens her. And he true. that continues in New York City. That um, the o- the only true. one that he really doesn't go after is the uh, is the guy in the sauna, that poor guy in the sauna who um, gets rocked to death. <laughs> Oh yeah, through the chest. Two, p- two people in this movie gets rocked to death. One with <laughs> yeah. one with a rock, and the other one with a guitar. <laughs> Very rock and roll. Um, <laughs> Jason ever get dry in this movie? He never dries out, does he? That's no, he's dry like an a- he's like one of the aliens. He just stays gooey during the entire movie. Yeah, he reminded Which, me honestly, of one of I, the. I liked. I thought he looked really gross. Yeah. Until he, he took gross. off his helmet, then I'm like, what? What is that? No. Yeah. What is that? But but he reminded me a lot one of the bad guys from a Pirates Caribbean film. He always slimy, always wet. (laughs) (laughs) But he does look cool. However, this is where I get disappointed because they did such a great makeup job on on Jason in Part Seven with his spine and the degradation of Jason. I would have liked them to have continued that degradation. Yes, somehow he. He re 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 regenerations in that's this a magic, one. That's a magic electricity, mate. Magic. I electricity. guess so. It's that it's that brackish, uh, yeah. salty crystal lake water. It's good for you, apparently. Now already <laughs> you've got a couple of people dead on this boat. Yes. And you've got the deckhand telling you you're all doomed. You're all doomed. Doomed. Not the brightest bunch. They're no. Not, you know the no, teachers are slightly annoyed at this point. Ah, yeah. Ah, it's crazy. The poor first officer in this film, like, no role, all right? No role. He's just the yes man to go on. Really? He's an admiral? I'm working with an admiral? Like, like what did he do wrong? Anyway, he gets a, he doesn't get a bad death. He, he, this is where the stakes start to jump up on the boat, because, Jason, I'm taking out the first officer now. Yeah. You guys are screwed. I didn't mind Jason that. knows more about naval uh, chain of command than the people who wrote this movie did. Yeah, but he gets harpoon too, because there's a couple of times a harpoon gets used. Well, you know, I I enjoy when how the see... uh, I enjoy how the first officer was the uh, was the cop who's one week away from retirement, and the, <laughs> he, he 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 they take a scene where he talks about his newborn daughter and his wife yes. and everything, and the whole time he's talking, I'm like, this dude's dead. This dude's dead. For some reason, they write. You know, the writers written it. Oh. This will create some emotional connection for the audience. They'll be rooting for him now. It'll be so tragic when he dies. Nobody like, in the we audience. We don't care. Yeah, um, everybody in the audience. Oh, no, they killed what's-his-name. You want to refill on your popcorn? <laughs> we got a god. We got a good, nice slicing of the throat, though, with the captain. That was a really good effect. It opened up quite well. I yes. Thought. Yes, yeah. I, I was quite impressed by that. Um, Captain Kid Todd, not that... Not that shattered about dear old dad, to be honest with you. Because he's dead lying on the floor and he's making plans with the rest of the crew or arguing that the jock's going to take him down with his buddies. So, yeah. So they go off, I, they go. I did this. like the jock's line about, I don't need nothing <laughs> but this. <laughs> okay, he's smart. I like him. Yeah, I like him. But they go hunt. They go hunting Jason, which is... I think the first time, Jason. You tell me when other in the films that a group have... I love disco. I don't care. I'll live in the 70s. And I've got to oh, love, love a good dance floor. It's so and terrible. And nothing would work better than having Jason kill somebody on the dance floor. Where in that boat do they have room for a dance floor, though? I have no idea. They have all I these have... passenger cabins with private showers. They've got a dance floor. They've got, like, seven decks in the engineering there's a size discrepancy on this boat somewhere. Yeah, there's a bit of an issue, isn't there? There's, a there's probably a theater issue. showing first run movies. There's a promenade with shops. And how many good... kids are on this cruise? Like seven? There's like seven yeah. kids on this whole cruise. Like, yeah, I think that would have been a bit of a failure for the school if that was, was an excursion. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, look, the, the disco death I liked. I, it was a bit drawn out having her in the air, but. I liked it. Well, you know, and again, magical teleporting Jason to the rescue. Mm. Or to the unrescue, I should say. Yeah. But that burning corpse video, Dweeb, that you mentioned too, it just... 
because that's the next kill after this. And you're so right. They they just hang on to it for so long. Somebody did thinking, not what like did that, that actor. Do like that? He has to get the longest on screen, screen like after death shot. Like, yeah, quiet. and this guy is like a the that kid is now an actor. I think on Riverdale or something. He's really? he's like a he's like a hot daddy on Riverdale, which is really weird. <laughs> it's a weird I'll have to look and see. Jason. The reason I mention it is because as a character. He, portrays innocence he's easily so he's just fawning over the bad girls that's his whole mm -hmm. thing in the movie but generally he's a nice kid he's not sinning he's not treating anybody bad and it just seems an odd choice to make sure that you hang on his death more than the other ones well i think and they I'm, needed a uh they need an excuse for them to abandon ship and maybe because they couldn't afford to actually show the boat sinking they had to no. I don't know. It's it, yeah, it is like, it is a we weird can't choice. Really light a lot of this set on fire, so we just light him on fire. Yeah, it's and fine. Then, it's fine. fine. He'll be fine. And, yeah. And it, but it does raise the stakes because now we've got a madman on the loose, a, zombie, a supernatural zombie. We've got the boys hunting him down, and the boat's on fire. Yes. Meanwhile, we've got the main girl and the mum and the. The, the creepy teacher, they've got their own thing going. So what we do have, interestingly enough, is three or four plot lines all simultaneously running at the same time, which is rather complex for a Friday the 13th. Yeah, these movies are not exactly deep. Yeah. <laughs> you know what is deep, though? An axe in the back of the creepy deckhand. Absolutely. He was wrong I... the whole time. He was doomed. That's well... what it should have been the last time. Who knew I was doomed? Yeah, well, the creepy old men in these movies don't last very long either, so, you know. <laughs> so as the boat's sinking, I, okay, we finally, and I reckon we're an hour in into this film. We're still on the goddamn boat at this point. Yes. But because it's on fire, everyone gets into a lifeboat. Don't know how the dog got there. Jason's not the only thing that can teleport. The dog can too. Well, you know. Jason. That's the dog's special powers. He can see ghosts and he can teleport. But they make their way, they row their way to New York Harbor, correct? Is that where they are? Yes. They Somehow they get to New York Harbor, they get to shore, not a single patrol boat notices them. Mm. And uh, this is an interesting behind-the-scenes tidbit for you. In the original script, when Jason makes it to the dock, the dog starts barking at him, and so Jason was supposed to have kicked the dog. Kane Hodder, who played Jason felt that kicking the dog was going too far. He's and so right. the scene I'm sorry. was dropped. You, you know, I, I don't mind if he cuts up a bunch of teenagers, but do not hurt a dog. I actually Jason. I want to see Jason pet a dog one day. Just a dog runs up to him. Jason reaches down, pets the dog. The dog whines and licks him and then runs away. Jason has a moral code. Oh, Absolutely. He really does. I mean, like, if you're in his way, he's going to kill you. But mm -hmm. you're not his target. You're not his target. He has and if you distract him, he's going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. So just but yeah. best avoid him. Premarital yeah. sex, drugs, alcohol. Yeah. If you do any of the, one of those things, he's going to come get you. Exactly. 100%. And, and it works that we have those rules for the character. Um, meanwhile, Jason is flapping around like uh, a fish underwater because he's following the lifeboat. And there's a missed opportunity not to have that mask come out like a little fin at some point. Oh, yes, I agree. His way to the harbour. <laughs> but, dude, how good is when he does arrive? And I'm trying to I'm see if I've got the picture here. But the I already know what you're going to say. Yes. The billboard. One of the greatest funniest gags that works so well i think because yeah hey look new york's a hockey town mate and of course you'd be there'd be billboards about sports when i met kane hotter that is the picture he signed for me was jason oh, standing really? in front of that that billboard so yes i think oh. it's a marvelous yeah marvelous. that's great i did not know that that's so cool dude i'm super jealous of that um and i've said it, i've said it before movie. i'm gonna say it again kane hotter is one of the nicest people i've ever met Mm. As a matter of fact, during this movie, um, even though it was a very rigorous shoot for them, because I had to shoot all all manner of the night in both uh, 
Toronto and New York City because they couldn't afford to film in New York City all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Kane Hodder would dance disco between takes to entertain everyone. <laughs> That's amazing. That's yes. amazing. Now, we, we do get to New York. A couple of things happen. A, they get stuck in a maze full of dirty alleyways. Yeah, like, because, you know, apparently that's all New York is. Yeah, it's just these really trashed alleyways. Um, and that, because it's 80s New York, they're mugged within the first five minutes. Oh, yes. Yes. It's straight away. That's New York for you. Anywhere you walk in, in the 80s New York, you were going to get mugged, um, which is kind of hilarious. But the real reason they had alleyways is that they only had like two days to film in New York, I think. And yep. the rest of it was shot in Toronto or something. Yes. To make it um, look like it. The, uh, the gang members are interesting. Um, hmm. Because, I mean, obviously they're, they're, they're preparing to do something very unspeakable to this young woman. Jason shows up and just kills the heck out of him. Again, Jason is this woman's guardian angel. Yeah, but I love the other gang member who shows up and sees that Jason has literally punched his way through this guy's chest. And does he scream? Does he run away? No. He acts annoyed and says, who the F are you? That's a very unbalanced reaction. A bit off, but this whole sequence here is a bit off. I mean, they it really is our main, um, protagonist girl they inject her with drugs yes because drugs are bad drugs are bad jason's come like you said jason's comes and kills them because originally the script was connected to seven and i think yes. there would have been a stronger focus on jason and her having a kinship where he would actually answer to her that's yes. where i think they would have taken the script but not explained here. He kills him. She gets up, and the drugs have worn off immediately. Oh yeah, because you know it's 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 eighties New York drugs, probably so bought very cheap. Drugs. It's very weak. <laughs> Somebody um, needs to have a talk with their dealer, but those somebodies are dead, so they're the dealer's getting away with it. Yeah. And when we talk about teleportation, we get another great little teleportation moment here, where the kids are busting their ass to run away, get onto the subway, and Jason's there. I Get love the window. I love that there is literally a half dead, rotting zombie with a machete walking through the subway, and the New Yorkers are ignoring him. They're just, I it's love. Perfect. I think that is the funniest gag in the entire movie. Is that they're just like, Ugh, don't just don't sit here, please. <laughs> That's it. And he's ignoring them too. So it's oh, like yeah. a mutual thing. We don't care about each other. So like I said, as long as you don't distract him, he's going to leave you alone if you're not his target. So you know they're they're gonna. That's Jason's a New Yorker. That's just it. That's just it. He's he's well, laser focused. Is. He's ignoring everybody. He just wants to get done what he wants to get done. And if you get in his way, he's going to do like a New Yorker does, only a lot more severe. You know, exactly. New Yorker will say, get the F out of the way. He's just going to smack you with his machete and just keep yeah. going. Again, right, that's a different type of Jason than previous yes. films, though, because the previous version of Jason would have just gone smorgasbord and hacked everyone up. Oh, absolutely. Um, this, again, goes back to my theory again that, yeah, absolutely right. This was the sequel to number seven with that main character. And, you know, he was focused on her. So they've left elements of that script in here. They should have just removed that whole concept because it's they should have, frustrating yes. to watch. It's frustrating as to watch Jason getting fried on train tracks and thinking that they was dead. Yeah, Well, right. you know, you lightning has... Him up. Lightning, you know, that's Jason's kryptonite if kryptonite is like meth. Oh, look, if Jason was a, a, a mobile phone, he was at 60% battery and you just recharge him to 100%. Yeah. So. yeah, you just gave him a power pack so he's good for the rest of the night. Yeah. Getting any Ninja Turtle vibes when they go down to the city? I <laughs> actually did. I wanted to see the Ninja Turtles <laughs> jump out with all their weapons and just go, whoa, and then go oh, and run away. <laughs> The moment have splinter Jason... have splinter back there go run my children run, <laughs> run, run. <laughs> this is a crossover we will not survive 
about the same year, wasn't it? Was this 89, 90? I think months, this was 89, so. and I think the Turtle movie came it out in 90. 90. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So it, it could have happened. It could have happened. It could have happened. Um, Jason shows uh, Casey Jones. His, <laughs> I'm now named the gang Casey Jones. Uh, Ninja Turtle motif going on here. <laughs> the, mar- the face. Another a great good gag. gag. A great gag. Great gag when he, because it's a Kane Hodder knew what he was doing in that time square. Oh, absolutely! Just walks up, kicks the absolute crap out of that ghetto blaster. <laughs> you know, and I love that boot. Just boots it. Hey, hey, hey. Like, uh. Which I don't. I think it sounded like Will Smith being played, which I'm not it, sure. Oh, I, so. I looked it up. I could not find out who <laughs> who uh, who sang "Living in the City" ain't no big deal. But if it was Will Smith, that means Will Smith was in a Friday the 13th movie. <laughs> well, and I think go. that's amazing. That That is pretty great. They really flushed toxic waste through the sewers in 1980s New York. I How have never. Do? I think that's just a plot device. I don't think that that actually ever happens. <laughs> no way would it happen. You yeah. would have had thousands of people dying from in high yeah toxic it's waste just coming i just vent. don't think that works before we get to this ending though we have to talk about the best death in the movie though oh the, mo- the best forget. death and the most and the most aggravating death first of all the most aggravating no the best death was the jock who challenges jason to a bare knuckle fist, fist fight which great one scene. great scene i like that somebody decides to fight Jason mano a mano. I think Gives that if he'd been old, thinking, too. he does. If he'd been thinking though, he would have pushed Jason off the side of the building because the edge was right there. But just the, the idea that Jason punches this guy in the face and knocks his head off and it lands in a dumpster is oh, comet gold. But then off camera, Jason climbs down out of that building, hmm. retrieves the head from the dumpster, sneaks up to a cop car, that apparently he just predicted because of his great analytical mind that these kids would end up to, even though there was no clue they would, and hangs the head by a little tiny string. Yeah. And just waits for them to find it. Just the idea you of him doing all this going, stuff off camera. Get just this double yeah. knot going. You're just <laughs> And then it then we go to the most aggravating death, and that is yes. of the teacher. Not not the mean teacher, but the other teacher who was kind of the mentor to the final girl. Yeah. Because they crash, they all leave, and then the car catches on fire, and not even the final girl, it's the, it's the, the boring boyfriend turns around and goes, Miss, Miss Patty, whatever her name was. And that's it. Yeah. There's she, no body, there's no nothing. She dies in a it's, fiery crash. It's like the actress who played her just said, nah, I'm done. Gee, and they I'm had to cover it up. To today. <laughs> um, I, wa- I did find the death of the mean teacher very satisfying, I guess, yes. because he got what was coming to him, and it was a very gruesome way to go. Yeah, I, that was it. Was that a barrel of toxic waste? That, I, think? I think that was just a barrel of just water and rat pee. Yeah, but he drowns. Which yeah, he, he drowns, and, and it's and pretty they, gruesome. And it's not a two second shot with cutaway. No, we we that camera stays fixed for oh, about yes. twenty seconds as we watch this guy drown. Yes. Um. Yeah, but you know the knocking off the head thing, and you, you're talking about Jason's taking this time to put the head in the cop car. That's not unusual. We know no, Jason. Has Jason, Jason of, is all about presentation. All about presentation. He will go and you know put the icing on the cake, put the cherry on top for you know food. He's a craftsman. And he job, is. You know, he takes it he is. Uh, now, speaking of speaking of craftsmen, at one point Jason chases the final two characters through a diner, and yes. he throws a, he throws a very large man into a mirror. Yes. Um, that man that he throws into the mirror is Ken Kurtzinger, and Ken yeah. Kurtzinger would go on to play Jason Voorhees in Freddy vs. Jason. So oh, Jason really? uh, Jason killed another Jason, which is. Not the first time it happens in this move in these movies. It happens again in uh, in Jason Goes to Hell. Oh wow! Okay, great. Because, J- because Jason that. kills Jason kills uh, an orderly who is played by Kane Hodder out of makeup. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's great. So if we had okay, a nickel you know for I'm every time at. that happened, we'd have ten set cents, which isn't a lot, but it's strange that it happened twice. Yeah. Now we're gonna get to Toxic Avenger. Yes, 
Okay, first of all, Jason's screaming is very weird. Weird, weird. It's very weird. Yeah. Did not and the, the makeup is... It's not grotesque. It's not scary. It's yeah. comical. And it was very bad. It, the reason I said Toxic Avenger because it looks like the special he effects from the does. Movies. He looks like the trauma Toxic films. Avenger. Yeah, it's a very trauma film esque, I think. Yes. Um, but his death is also. When we don't talk about some of the ridiculous things, one of the things yes. that made me groan in this film is that. Look, you had to put this through a special effects lab to make this happen. Yeah. Oh, the special lightning effects. strike. Hold it. Hold it. Special effects. Yeah. The shot of Jason throwing up before the water hits him is yeah. not a special effect. Kane Hodder can throw up on cue. Oh! One of his many talents. So that, what you're looking is Kane Hodder actually vomiting. Because wow. he can do it on cue. And I think that's amazing. But that yes, is let's, amazing. I'm glad you mentioned it. Let's get on to this terrible yeah. ending. A terrible ending. So basically Jason's getting melted by the... You know, they're on a timer. They're about to release all the t the waste. And they're climbing up to get out. And, of course, Jason's getting melted away as such, you know. But they, his actual death is signified by a freaking lightning strike on the Statue of Liberty. Well, you know. They had to put that for a special effects lab. You know. It's just like, has he got that much power that the from the gods above... Lightning will come down and strike the Statue of Liberty. It's just, it's okay, like you said, if there's a supernatural teleportating zombie Jason. But they keep breaking their own rules in their film. And strangely you know? enough, that is not the most ridiculous thing about the death. What do you it think? It's even more ridiculous because Jason is turned into a little boy. Yes. And whenever they show a close-up of the little boy, he's breathing. Wait a second. Yes. You mean to tell me that Jason got turned into a little boy, that little boy is alive, and then they leave him in the sewer? It's, it's this, isn't it? Yeah, but but the kid that's down there, he's not he's not freaky makeup, Jason. It's just a regular no. kid. With bad makeup anyway. You clearly yeah. didn't see the other films in the way of makeup. This is some of the bad things, is that is nowhere near close to what they've designed for that boy character in multiple other films. Well, you know, honestly, I, I think he looks pretty good right there, and I actually think that if there was any scary scene, uh, it would be that scene right there where the little boy is in the middle of the road and everything's quiet except yes. for that boom, boom. That was super scary, and I remember that got me whenever I was younger. Yeah. But none of the other shots of the boy mm. look like that. Yeah. He's just a normal kid all the other times. And I'm True, just wondering, yes. what is the even, thought process here? Even this scene, going back to here. Yeah. A he's full just head a of hair, a normal looking boy. Yeah. And then later they give him like the little droopy eye and a couple others. But yeah, that yeah. one shot where he's standing in front of the car, that's like full on, like almost close to the way he looked in 1981. But mm. I just don't get, I don't get the reasoning behind it. It's just so so vague yeah. and it just ruins everything and the the shot of the little boy alive in the sewer i just i it's been what 30 years i can't get over that no i i get angry when i when i think about it. I'm like it what are, lazy. what were they even trying to do yeah that's right it seems lazy now and, and what they're trying to do here though is this is the last roll of the dice, I think, at this time, right? Because this, around this time, don't Paramount lose the rights? They did not lose the rights. They sold the rights. Sorry, sold the rights to New York, um, correct? What happened was this movie had a budget of $5 million, mm -hmm. which meant that Jason takes Manhattan. He doesn't really take Manhattan. He's just in Manhattan for 15 minutes. Mm. They had plans to shoot at Madison Square Gardens, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building. Paramount said no. It. You can't we can't afford it. Um and so number one, I think that the movie basically does not deliver what it promises. Mm. But then the movie, despite the fact it it made money, it made fourteen million dollars with a budget of five. It was still mm. the lowest grossing of the series. Paramount was kind of embarrassed by it by this point. Mm. 
And so they sold it to New Line Cinema. And New Line Cinema would go on to uh, be the be the distributor for Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, and Freddy vs. Jason. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paramount would not come back into the picture until the reboot that no one ever talks about. No. And we eventually will. Um, but yeah, I mean, but they, I feel like as a parting shot, they're like, like if you're melting Jason into nothing, like you're pretty well saying the character's gone. You're not really setting up for a sequel well at all at this stage. You know what I mean? At least six and seven, they put him in the bottom of the lake. We're not completely blowing him up yet. Um, in fact, we see the result of that in the next film, which jason film without jason in many ways so you know um, but you know i do i do respect the way that new line did not take the bait and just brought back jason for no reason at all no the they played it, yeah i thought it yeah. was great yeah well that'll be the next friday the 13th um uh ep movie that we do next after this but this film probably enjoyed this number three on my list so far six stands out I do like four. I do like four, even though it has got some problem. Number four is still my second favorite. And this one is right up there in third. Like, for much as goofy it was, it had some really strong things about it that worked as well. I enjoyed it. I shouldn't have. I know it's bad. I know it's terrible. Oh, you're in guilty pleasure territory. It is. It is a guilty pleasure. Eight is definitely a guilty pleasure. And, you know, you got to give them props for trying to do something new. Yeah, yeah. Because they're absolutely. trying to mess with the uh, with the formula. Yeah. Sorry, my, my cat is like doing something over there. I don't know what she's you doing. You know why your cat's doing something, Jason? Because they're excited. Because you know they what are. we're doing now. We're Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do, do it. it, eh? do, it. Let's... do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. There we go. There we go. There we... Here we go. We got the wheel. All right. Now, any predictions this week, Jason? Is there anywhere you want to land? I know we talked about what you want to land. Tell me where you think we will land this week. I think that we're owed animated by this point. I, I yeah, just I feel it in my bones. Okay, well, I'm putting my money down on the horror because I feel like we are. this is becoming a horror show. So I'm going, well, let's find out. Let's press enter. I can click or press enter today. I'm going to press enter. And I just What did you do? I just remember. Ah! Now we're back. <laughs> Enter won't work. Let's click. There we go. Oh. This is exciting. Oh. Oh. oh, We're in science fiction and fantasy again. Okay. Wow. We're there again. Okay. That means I better better bring it up. I'm I'm happy with that choice. I don't hate that choice. I don't I'm, I'm, I'm not. Cool. I'm a big fan of science fiction and fantasy. The one I'm yeah, looking exactly. for, the one I'm not looking forward to is drama. Just drama is just bore me. Yeah, exactly. All right, here we are. Are we ready to do this, Jason? I'm ready. ready. Let's do it. I mean, there's some great movies on there. I see so many I want to do so badly. Oh, I look Dark Man from Enemy Mine, which I love. I'm looking at the Beastmaster. I'm looking at a oh, Swamp Thing is still on there. Is it? We'll have to remove yeah, that. It is. Is sure it's yep. not Return or it is actually Swamp Thing? We love it I that think it's much. just Swamp Thing. Well, if yeah. we, we spin it now, we get an extra. I ain't doing Swamp Thing again. You can do that <laughs> show by yourself. Yep. Well, we're going to find out what we're doing now, Jay. It's the best moment. Where are we? Where are we? We are. Oh. We are Q the Wing Serpent. Oh, wow. wow. I haven't seen this one since the Aitor yeah. era here, aren't we? I have not seen this one since at least the early 80s. It's been yeah, a long too. time. I have a memory of it, though, but it is certainly in that, that what do you call it, the genre, the, the sword and sandal genre, the sorcery genre? The, like the, this is off the back of Conan era. Yeah, of it's. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I just call it Big Camp. <laughs> Because it's, yeah, it's a it's a movie about the uh, the Mayan god Quetzalcoatl showing up in New York City. Oh, I'm thinking of a different film. Yes, I do remember this. I remember the poster of the serpent on top of Empire State Building. Did yes. they do a shot of it? Yes, I do remember that now. Absolutely. Um, this movie is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't <laughs> remember it. I just remember I remember the the monster grabbing a girl out of a swimming pool, and that's all I remember. Yep. 
Oh, awesome. Maybe we'll... You know what? I haven't seen it since the early 80s. And I remember it being, as a kid, cheesy back then. Who knows what we're going to find when we go back. This, I just have a feeling this is going to be painful. <laughs> well, i got to be honest with you. This next week, this next two episodes... Uh, I'm not super looking forward to. Obviously, we've got this to do, but we've also got Jason's to Hell, and I don't have a good relationship with that movie. So I have a be... weird respect for Jason Goes to Hell, and I will explain next week, but I'm actually a fan. All right. Well, until then, we will catch you guys on the next VHVS Vault where we're watching Q, the Winged Serpent. We'll catch you guys soon. Check out SpectrumSanctorum.net for all of our podcast merch. We have an entire merch store ready to give you all the things that you loved about our podcast. And get notified on all of our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and our Spectrum Sanctorum merch store. Follow us today and be sure to hit that bell when you're watching our YouTube videos so you can be notified of when a new episode releases.